Okay, fighters gone over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Red. There were no final questions from you, Blue. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. I'm not ready to fight. It's business time. Is that what you got? AJ McKee's 18th fight winning streak, the longest in Bellator MMA history. It's all about the belt. Patricio Pitbull wants to go down as the very Fight. best. That's a legacy he wants to the body. And immediately, McKee explodes with a kick to the body. Oh, my God. 
fight. Okay, take your time, move to the right, keep working your stick, give me some up and down feints, and don't be afraid to clinch because when you're coming out, you're looking sloppy and your hands are down. All right, other than that, how do you feel? Good? Okay. Major McKee's down. Everything's going your plan. You got that round. That was a good round for you. Patricia, respira fundo. Respira, se concentra. Ó, oh, tá perfeito, perfeito. Com calma. Fazendo ele errar. Tá, tá perfeito, tá escutando? Eu só quero que você continue atento e sempre com as costas. The fact that Patricio Pitbull gave up the lightweight title and then his brother went on to win it. McKee feels that if he wins tonight, he should be champ. That's not how it works. No, it doesn't work that way. Things you want to keep an eye on coming into the second round, John, after the first five minutes. I think the thing you really want to look for is Pitbull starting to use his hands with that right hand crowd. He's got to step up. He able to touch AJ. He's made a couple of rushes, but he wasn't able to touch him. The kicks have worked. Now he's going to start to touch him.
tudo tá perfeito, tudo tá perfeito. Esse round, essa luta pode estar tá um a um. Esse round você ganhou, tranquilo. All the way over, and then follow up with something. Will you throw you? And some of the leg kicks, that's a clean inside kick by Pitbull. That lands right on the meaty part of the thigh there. Beautiful shot to the body there. I thought the kicks by Pitbull were a big difference in this round. He was throwing them cleanly. The right lands just not solid. Beautiful use of a body attack. Goes to the body multiple times. And when AJ's shaking his head, that's all well and good. And that's telling the judges usually, well, that, that touched good. good. Stay back from the Hey, watch your head coming in, yeah? Hey, sure. Good? Ready? Ready? Fight! Round number three.
Shot lands just about behind the ear of AJ. You see him react to it, starts taking steps back, but that's what got him in the takedown position. He lands some good shots here, and that's the real big difference. He got a good takedown, landed some good elbow strikes, some punches there. Then Pitbull jumped towards the guillotine. And the real question, Moro, is how much credit are you going to give towards that guillotine? Was he ever in a position where you thought AJ was in trouble? He escapes right here, pops his head when he jolts him to the ground, then lands a couple of other small shots. Great round for both guys. No, no, I, I do not see it. I'm kidding what he brought, career, okay? AJ McKee entering the championship rounds. This is round number four. Fight! Patricio Pitbull trying to force a rubber match. AJ McKee looking to extend the longest winning streak in Bellator history. Unofficial scorecard belongs to Big John McCarthy. He has McKee ahead 29 28 after three rounds. It's all right because I didn't give credit so much to the kids in this round. I thought it was time to back time enough to submit it. I could be wrong and the judges could be able to do it. Hey, you keep playing. 
Don't let him steal this round, okay? You're in the last round. You're doing good. So far, I have your head on all the rounds. Stop working so hard. He's tired, bro. He's tired just like you are. But you're younger, okay? You're younger than he. Patrício, tá muito equilibrado. Ele tá morto e ele só quer dar golpe explosivo. Você pode continuar mantendo o ritmo do começo ao Right to the body and a nice left hand finishing it off. Brady and McKee, the real difference in this fourth round when you're looking at things. That was a beautiful left hook up top by Pitbull. But he, he slowed his round. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sign of sportsmanship here by A.J. McKee. Embracing both football brothers. Starting off right away. Coming with a flying side kick to the body. We saw beautiful leg kicks at times by Patricio Pitbull. Goes to the body. The guillotine attempt. He tried. Wasn't quite there for him at times. Started to look like it got a little tight, but you never saw AJ truly struggling with it. AJ worked his way out. Man, a lot of body kicks. Beautiful left hand. Both guys gave it everything they had. Sometimes big power by AJ, sometimes big power by Pitbull. But you gotta go back to the grappling aspect. AJ was the guy that was able to get the takedowns and sometimes land good elbows and punches on the ground in that position. Thank you. First time in his career, AJ McKee's got the five round distance against the man he thrown, Patricio Pitbull. Both of them believe they have done enough to walk out of the Bellator MMA cage. Champion. We're about to find out who indeed will leave San Jose Bellator featherweight champion. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we're going now to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Michael Bell, scores the fight. 49 to 46, while judges Ron McCarthy and Derek Cleary both see it the same, 48 to 47. All three have it for the winner by unanimous decision. He is the new with a battle for the gold, the Bellator MMA Flyweight Championship. Juliana Velasquez set to defend it for the second time against Liz Carmouche, who was five and two since she dropped down to 125 in December of 2017. Bell, round one, scheduled for five. And remember, it took just over half a minute for Carmouche to punch her way to this championship opportunity in her last fight, and she walks down the champion early. This is what exactly what I would expect to see out of Liz Carmouche. You cannot sit there and wait. You've got to create these situations. You've got to create your opportunities. Don't get into a long-range battle with Juliana. Press her forward. Like what I'm seeing out of Liz right now. It was Carmouche's first victory via form of knockout since she stopped Jessica Andraj in July of 2013. So long time coming as Velasquez fires off a left hand inside. Low kick by Carmouche. Another kick to the leg. And all of those by the kicks, challenger. All of those kicks more are needed by Liz. She needs to continue to attack those legs. Slow down that movement of Juliana. And it has elapsed in the first round. The challenger continues to stalk the champion. Carmouche from the South Boss stance, but moving back to orthodox. And you'll see both stances on display. It's a calf kick, another calf kick by the challenger. And Carmouche closes the distance in the exchange shots. 
Juliana is very heavy on that front leg, so it's going to be there for Liz to attack. And both are counter fighters at heart, and Velasquez showing some crisp counter punching here against Carmouche. She is, but notice the exits by Liz. She's landing that last shot, which is important. Juliana already showed not a whole lot of fighters like to fight off their back foot or actually are good at it. She showed against Denise Kielholz, she can do it and she can land good shots. So this is not unusual for her as far as moving backwards, but Liz needs to take that and make it up. Oh, up. and there Carmouche lands a left on the champion's chin. And there the champion fires off a one-two combination from the southpaw stance that scored. Champions landed a couple of very clean, straight left hands. Of course, Valentina Shevchenko is saw Wow. While Carmouche owns a victory over her the last time they met, that proved to be a big problem, and uh, Carmouche talked about facing a, a southpaw in Velasquez and the, the adjustments and the changes she needs to make. Of course, longtime training partner with Alima Leigh McFarlane and would love to gain a measure of revenge for her training partner, who of course is back at it tomorrow night here in her home turf. Very nice straight left hand landed by Juliana there, but still relentless pressure coming forward by Liz but the output needs to start to just start notching it up. Yeah, Carmouche has thrown 30 strikes, landed 10. Velasquez, 8 of 17, according to our statistical department. There's a nice jab to the midsection by Velasquez. Doesn't follow up with the left and then backpedals, resets, but the pressure continues to be administered by Carmouche. Liz has started getting into a little bit of she's following. You don't want to follow, you want to cut off that ring. Tactical opening, four minutes of this championship fight. Leg kick by Carmouche, another jab to the body by Velasquez. Faints with the kick. Has landed quite a few more kicks. That's the real difference in this round right now that I'm seeing. Yep, 10 of 11 compared to one of three for the champion, John. But the champion, Velasquez, putting together a good textbook one two from the southpaw stance. But the big thing, she's got to get past the one two into the three four. Yes. High kick by Carmouche. Both of them have to be careful, tuck those chins. 10 seconds, Carmouche catches the kick, clinches with Velasquez, both known for savvy work within the clinch, but the clock will run out in the opening round. We mentioned her, there she is, the inaugural flyweight champion, Alima Leigh McFarlane. It's always a happening when she fights in her native Hawaii. And she returns to action following the longest layoff of her career. She will face Justine Kish tomorrow night, Bellator 279, right here at Neil S. Blaisdell Arena in Honolulu. She is cheering on her longtime friend Liz Carmouche. In fact, Carmouche signed her Bellator MMA contract here in Honolulu. So this place has a, a special meaning for her and uh, not a bad start for the challenger. Not a bad start for either. I thought it was the big difference was, were the kicks by Liz Carmouche. A couple of good shots landed there in the stand-up. I thought the Velasquez line landed a couple of very nice straight left hands. Carmouche coming over the top. A little right left landing. Not a ton of power on it. But the leg kicks are something that Liz needs to stick with. They had an effect in the beginning of the round. She kind of got away from them a little bit towards the end of that first round. She needs to get back to it. And Velasquez might want to dip into that arsenal as well as we've seen in the past. Of course, she is a, a Judica Carmouche, is a 10th 
Oh, oh beautiful wow. left hand by Juliana. And dropping Carmouche in the second round, the first knockdown of the fight. And now another one two by the champion. That was a clean, straight down the pipe left hand by Juliana. And Carmouche bouncing right back to her face, but she has tasted the power. Going upstairs with a high kick. Velasquez, 12 and 0 with four knockouts. Carmouche has tasted the power, now looking for the takedown. That's her first takedown attempt, and she secures it. Very nice job by Liz, and this is something she needs to do. Good job of trying to lace the legs here. She's trying to figure four of those. We'll see if she can get to it. She does. And she needs to get Juliana's back off of that fence material onto the canvas. It sounds easy to do, but it's very difficult. There's a whole lot of technique going on from both women right here. Juliana to stay in that upright position. Liz trying to create pressure, but not get to the point where it's so light that all of a sudden Juliana can start to pull her feet out. See Liz reaching out for that right arm. She's got the wrist. She needs to control that, get that elbow now off the ground, and she can use her head as a third arm to drive Juliana towards that canvas. Strength from Liz Carmusha on display, managing to keep that right arm neutralized and taking small steps, trying to move up. Little tiny moves make big differences. You see her trying to get that, lace that arm. Now she's got that arm where she can hold it with the right arm. The champion not panicking. Velasquez up against the fence. And now the pass by Carmouche coming up on the midpoint of the second round. A lot of pressure by Liz right now. Driving straight down into Juliana, keeping her in that position. Opens up with that left hand. Remember, she's got that right hand holding onto the right arm of Juliana. Velasquez up against the fence, going to get back to her feet and does so. Just over two minutes left in the second round, so Velasquez back to her feet, but it's still Carmouche putting the pressure on her, putting all her weight against her on the fence, and delivers a knee to the inside thigh. Another knee by Carmouche to the champion. The champion's in there with that wizard. Many times Judokas love the wizard, even oh. over the underhook. An old school veteran at Arthur, the foot stops. And every time we see footstops, we've got to give a shout out to the king of the streets, Marco Huas. I think it's in the contract, John. <laughs> a minute and a half remaining in the second. Carmouche doing whatever it takes to keep the champion off balance. And But it's champion now. Velasquez has Carmouche against the fence. Nice job by Juliana to switch the position. You see Liz digging that underhook. Beautiful knee to the body. And the clinch is an area where a lot of pundits uh, were interested in seeing what would materialize, and we're seeing it unfold here with just over a minute left in the second round. Well, like we talked about it, Liz Carmouche is possibly the strongest 125-pound female fighter you'll find, and I think Juliana is second. So they're both used to being able to kind of bully their way with the other women in the and, division. <laughs> and they're jockeying for position they're here. Exactly they're taking that. turns here, and there's clinch battle final minute of the second round and again every taxing second and velasquez showing she's uh adept at delivering a foot stomp as well and knee strike by promotion the trip takedown by velasquez with 20 seconds left velasquez secures her first takedown Carmouche very comfortable on her back, of course, with training 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, Eddie Bravo and company. Good stuff through two rounds of this flyweight championship fight.
And John, your unofficial scorecard reads. You know, unofficially, I've got to give the round to Velasquez. As you recall at the beginning, she knocked her down with a straight left hand. That was a big telling shot. Here it comes right here. That put Liz on her butt. That was a clean shot. Now Liz got the takedown and she was doing good positional work, but she wasn't able to inflict much damage on Juliana. Juliana was able to get a takedown of her own. That knockdown is a big part of what the judges are gonna look at. This is a beautiful takedown by Liz to get Juliana to the ground, but again, wasn't able to do much as far as doing damage. She did some good work, but not enough to make up in my mind for the knockdown. Velasquez representing Team Noguera Carmouche, representing the Arena MMA. Fourth opportunity at a major MMA title, the second defense for Juliana Velasquez after a narrow split decision win over Denise Kilholtz in her first challenge. Her first title defense, and now trying to hold off the challenge of Liz Carmouche, round number three. Calf kick by Carmouche. Big John has it even, heading into the third. Of course, the fight would become official after this third round. We know what happened a week ago in the final of the $1 million light heavyweight World Grand Prix between Corey Anderson and the champion Vadim Nemkov, resulting in a no contest after an accidental head clash. And hopefully they will conclude that tournament. Bantamweight Grand Prix getting underway tomorrow, but Velasquez with a left hand here in her flyweight title defense. And Carmouche has to be careful, John, when she comes in because her chin is exposed. Absolutely, sir. Her chin's starting to get a little high when she comes in as she's throwing her shots. And you're starting to see a change in the momentum of this fight. Look at who's moving forward now. Yes, the champion Look who's Velasquez. on her back foot. Again, Liz going after that leg. I think she needs to continue to work that leg as much as possible. Numbers are interesting in terms of punches landed and thrown. Big edge for Velasquez, as we talked about, a big edge for Carmouche when it comes to kicks. And it's that left hand. This is having a hard time figuring out the straight left hand by Juliana. She's setting it up well, and she's getting Liz into her range, throwing that jab out, following it up. Nothing fancy, nothing special, but she's being effective. Double jab, then delivers the left. And we talked about total kicks landed. Cavalcade for Carmouche, 19 of 23 compared to one of four for Velasquez, but Velasquez has been content to be a headhunter. And as you mentioned, that left hand has been key. That left oh, beautiful and beautiful and that kick kick and delivers the left. And you notice how she caught it with the right, moved it off to set up the straight left hand. Beautiful, Beautiful technique. technique. <laughs> yeah, <I love> <laughs> Midway point of the third round, another left hand from Velasquez, flashing the jab again, going down the middle, and Carmouche has to take her head off center line, try to find a way to navigate a path to the champion, use angles. There's a kick, and lands calf kick by the challenger. But you're right, John, she's now on her back foot. It's Velasquez putting the pressure on the challenger. Yeah, Velasquez has become the sniper here. She's just setting up that left hand. She's looking for her opportunities to land it. Carmouche sometimes upsets her balance, upsets her positioning with that low leg kick, but not enough to stop what Juliana's starting to set up. There's another solid left hand that connects for the champion Velasquez. That was a clean, straight shot. Liz really needs to start to change this up because she's starting to eat that left hand repeatedly, and now you're seeing Juliana, as we talked about before. She will go downstairs to the body, set it up, then come back up top. Velasquez left hand. 
result of the long takedown, the knockdown, but now a takedown by Carmouche. Important takedown for Carmouche. Look, she was starting to lose that stand up, clearly lose it. She needed to change the aspect of this fight. That's what she's doing with this takedown. Let's see what she can do. She's only got a minute left. Yep, and it's her second takedown of the fight. The champion delivering some elbows from the bottom. And right now, she got the takedown. Great technique, got it there. She hasn't thrown one strike. And Juliana, although they're from her back, she's throwing the elbows. She's the one that's being the aggressor. Got to be careful about those elbow strikes to the back of the head, but they're that's legal. Right. That's right to the top yep. of the head. That is clean. Under 30 seconds left in the third round. Close guard of Velasquez. Wide base by Carmouche, but her posture being controlled effectively by the champion. Speaking of the champion. We are headed to the championship rounds of our Bellator 278 main event. A little can opener action from Carmouche as we go to round number four. Three deep breaths, How are you feeling? Good? That entry's there anytime. That entry's there anytime, again. Tá tomando a queda boba, né? Tu viu ela entrando, não deu sprawl. Tá bom. A gente foi dominante o round todo. Faz sinalzinho que ela deu a queda, não fez nada, tá? Esse round foi nosso, tá bom? Só que era só. Here's that straight left and landed right on the jawline of Liz Carmouche. And it, that left hand has been the big difference in this mm. fight. Julianne has been able to land heavy shots continuously in the last couple rounds, and it's making a difference. This was a great takedown by Liz to get to the top position, but once she got there, Moral, there just wasn't any real effective offensive output. Okay, John Corner has administered its instructions heading into the championship rounds. Challenger Liz Carmouche, champion Juliana Velasquez, here heading into round four, the biggest adjustment you would like to see each make beginning with the champion. With the champion, I, what I want to do is don't allow the takedown. You're controlling this now in the stand-up. Oh, and there's there a there knockdown with the left hand. A little bit off balance, I think, also. Yep, also. What, what caused it? And but for Carmouche. Carmouche, you have got to work into this clinch area and now work to get this to the ground. You've got to get to the top position. But when you get there, you have to be busy. job of raising that underhook with her right arm. That's what was able to turn Liz to get her back against the cage. Little techniques, little things that make differences. Right now, Juliana with double unders. Velasquez, 35, didn't start training MMA until the age of 27. Undefeated. Including seven wins under the Bellator MMA banner. Eats a couple of knees from the challenger, Carmouche, but then Velasquez turns Carmouche and they continue to balance. There's the Judoka going for a judo throw takedown, but defended by Carmouche. Not really defended, the defense helped a lot in that one, but it was. Well, it didn't result right. in the takedown. Right. She's getting herself back to her feet. But you can really see a difference right now in their effectiveness in the fight. Juliana starting to be the one that is, for the most part, starting to control the position, starting to control where this fight's gonna be. Well, we've seen in the past where Luz Carmouche comes on late to take rounds, and that may be the case here now. Under three minutes left in the fourth, and again, she eats that left hand down the middle, ne middle needs to take her head off center line, tries to attack the legs of the champ. She's leaning back, and you don't want to be in that position because you can only lean back so far that Juliana makes the proper adjustment and brings her feet into play. That shot's going to land. She's going to be off balance, and she's going to end up on the ground. Another left 
backhand, this one to the body of Carmouche. That's the midway point of the fourth. One, two combination scores for the champion. And now Carmouche storms the champion. And it's the champion now utilizing footwork and being able to move to her right. Two minutes left in the round. There's good timing by Liz to take advantage of that left hand that Juliana threw. But she ends up, now she's got Juliana's back against the cage. She's got to work through this takedown. Fence and it's this gritty battle for positioning. And Carlos spins Velasquez to the canvas. Caught that leg, controlled it with that spin. Beautiful takedown by Liz. Not much time left though. 40 seconds left to work from side control. And she definitely needs to up the attack. 30 seconds left in the round. She's trying to neutralize the Right arm of the champion, and now looking to deliver some ground and pound. Crucifix position. Short elbow strikes. There's a couple good ones in there. Referee stops the fight. We've got a new flyweight champion. Too sure about that stop tomorrow. I don't think she was eating any heavy shots. I don't think and she was in trouble. A look of incredulity on the face of Juliana Velasquez. Yeah. I mean, it's always the referee's decision to make that stoppage, but I didn't see where I thought she was in trouble. I thought she was in trouble with the crucifix as far as the positioning. She's gonna have to work her way through it, eat some shots. But that's her wife that she exchanged a kiss with through the cage. Braylon Chapman, her six-year-old son, Grant, is also in attendance, but disappointment for Juliana Velasquez, who in her second title defense loses her championship in what will be a highly debated decision by the referee, one Mike Beltran. Right there, two shots, three shots. This is a championship fight. You gotta let that champion work. I'm not saying that she wasn't getting hit, but those are not real heavy elbows. Mike, Mike Beltran thinks he sees something. Right now, Juliana's corner is not happy with that stoppage. You do not want to take anything away from the journey that Liz Carmouche has taken in her mixed martial arts career, but this one will be talked about on the forums, on social media. It will officially go down as Liz Carmouche becoming the third Bellator MMA flyweight champion. She talked about this being serendipity. Here in Hawaii, a place that reminds her of Okinawa, Japan, where she spent her childhood. The U.S. Marine, who on this night fight for our heroes in front of military members, frontline workers and first responders. Carmouche has realized her dream, but it's a nightmare scenario. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. 
Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end, four minutes, 47 seconds, in round number four, the winner by knockout, and now the new Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Liz Gorilla Paramouche. All right, gentlemen, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out. How do your business? Let's go. Each tournament belt scheduled for five rounds using the ABC Unified Rules of Professional MMA. Fighter wins the tournament. Bout, they'll advance to the next stage of a bout involving, well, tonight, the vacant title, the interim title, I should say, is up for grabs. So I want to tell you that if this fight ends via no contest or draw, the judges' additional ballot will determine who advances, but the title will remain vacant. And immediately, Archuleta coming forward on Stotts, and Stotts tagging Archuleta. Nice one, two, boy, they are definitely They're swinging hard early. And Archuleta stumbles forward. Man. They are coming out gangbusters and wanting to make it a short fight. There is no feeling out process. Both guys have been throwing big oh, leather. Nice right straight hand right that hand that landed for Archuleta. Level change and looking for the takedown. The sprawl by Stotts. Archuleta got him <laughs> up in the air and Rafi on Stotts like a cat landed on his feet. Amazing. But Archuleta now with Rafi on has him up against the cage. And this is one of the things that makes Archuleta different than a lot of guys that come from that wrestling background. Archuleta will actually break off of this and land something. He'll, he'll purposely break off just to land a, a big strike. We'll see if he does that or if he tr continues on and trying to put Rafion's back to the canvas. Rafael being smart as far as just attacking with these little shots just to irritate Juan. Juan wants to take away that posting right hand of Rafion. Right now his hands are not in a position to do it based upon where, there you go, you see him grabbing for that wrist. Unable to get it. And both back up to their feet now with Archuleta. Putting the pressure on Stott Stotts with the overhook, fighting for the opportunity to try to get the dominant position. A foot stomp, a couple from Archuleta, but Stotts has to try to create separation. Get away from the fence. Archuleta talked about going back to school, going to colleges and wrestling with all the guys there. He says it was humbling. I was getting my butt kicked by all these kids, but it brought me back to what was my base and my wrestling improved by leaps and bounds. He believes it's going to be a big difference for him here tonight. Yeah, Archuleta spent time wrestling with Danny Sabatello, who of course booked passage to the Grand Prix last night with a win over Jornel Lugo. He will face Leandro Higo and uh, Enrique Barzola, also making it to the tournament. Archuleta wants to bring him to the backside there. Trying to hold that leg with his. He's got the single leg going. You can see Rafion doing a nice job digging his arm underneath that chin area. Nice trying to push the head down into that flying knee. Nice job by Rafion Stotts. Stotts able to create separation. A minute left, it's Archuleta bringing the offense. Combinations. Great left by Stotts, but 
Archuleta again closes the gap. Archuleta's, throwing punches. Archuleta's got a cut next to his left eye. Clashed heads again. Don't know how the cut occurred. And there's the timing and the takedown by Stotts, immediately getting the back of Archuleta. Stotts has four submission wins. Nice job of trying to roll through by Archuleta. And Stotts in good position here, heavy hip ride. All four of his wins via rear naked choke, but time running out here at the end of the first round. Bellator MMA takes this show international with stops in Paris and in London. First Friday, May 6th, The Darkness. Czech Congo aims to throw shade on the City of Light and dethrone the reigning heavyweight champion Ryan Bader in front of his home country of France. Friday, May 6th, live, 9 p.m. British Standard Time. Then on Friday, May 13th, London gets an up-close look at the fight styles of local favorite Michael Venom Page. MVP enters the cage against Division I All-American wrestler Logan the Storm Storley to declare the interim welterweight championship Friday, May 13th, live 9 p.m. British Standard Time. Set for round two, former champion Juan Archuleta. And Rafion Stotts looking to extend his winning streak to 10. Nice clean left hand by Rafion Stotts there. Rafion needs to really start to just open up. That was a good one. That's good Archuleta running. who's opening up on Stotts. Yep. Archuleta's got that pressure coming forward. He's putting Stotts right. on his back foot. Stotts ducked underneath the right hand, looking for the takedown defended by the Purdue alum. Right hand of the body by Archuleta. One, two from Stotts, but Archuleta with the better counter. Pressure being put on by Juan Archuleta. And Stotts trying to pick him off. Body kick by Stotts. Right hand. And now the fight is becoming just that here in the first minute of the second, John. Yeah, going after this. A lot of body shots by Juan Archuleta. He's going up and down. Stotts, for the most part, headhunting on Archuleta. Lead right hand, but Archuleta using it to set up the shot, but defended by Stotts as they fight along the fence. Threw away the right hand, was looking for the takedown, and now the wizard employed by Stotts. Stotts remaining real heavy on that wizard. You see Archuleta using his head, trying to displace the head, weakening Rafion Stotts in the position. Separation again from the southpaw stance. Pressure on that. Leaning on that front foot and fishing for the jab. Reaching the midway point of the second round as Archuleta resetting, utilizing footwork. Comes in looking to go to the body, almost got caught with a knee.
Archuleta putting together punches, but then walks right into that well-timed shot by... Beautiful wizard. Yes, stocks, but a nice wizard employed by Archuleta. Again, unloading. He's still trying to go for the takedown. Archuleta's working for the takedown ball, but a lot of what he's doing is he's trying to tire out the arms of Rafion Stotts. All this wrestling, although Stotts comes from a wrestling background, you have to do this consistently to be able to stay with it. And the pressure that Juan Archuleta is bringing right now, it can wear out anybody. And Rafion Stotts just trying to hold on and keep himself from going down. There's a lot of use of his arms. They can get real heavy. Rafael trying to dig that underhook with his right arm. At least, at least wants to put that hand towards bicep control so he can push the arm of Archuleta to the side. Nice wrist control there. Archuleta digging that underhook. Nice job by Archuleta. Under a minute left in the second. Archuleta's got double unders now. He's got the ability to have control of the upper body of Rafael Stotts. Now he's Stotts back to the single leg. Base and Stotts trying to defend the single leg takedown attempt by Archuleta with 30 seconds now left in the second round. Elbows by Stotts balancing on one leg. Another elbow to the body by Rafion Super Stotts. Got to be impressed with the defensive wrestling of Rafion Stotts. Archuleta has worked really hard. Nice elbows attack. Right there. Mentioned Quentin Rampage and Jackson. There he is, sitting cage side. Bellator MMA alum, but. He and I reminisced about those halcyon days in Japan with Pride Fighting Championships. Some memorable New Year's Eve spent with Quentin Rampage Jackson in Roppongi, John. Save that story for a different time you slot. You need to save that story for a <laughs> lot of different time slots. Is when I jam jam, okay? As I follow him out. All right, try to beat us on the lead hand side, right? Close the door with your hooks. Get your lead uppercuts and close the door with the kicks. All right, gentlemen, third round. Bell round number three. Right uppercut delivered by Archuleta. Stotts trying to land the counter left. Oh, oh he's, he's out. out. Archuleta's down, Stotts. It's over. Rafion Super Stotts advances to the semifinals and is the new interim bantamweight champion with his 10th consecutive win, becoming the first person to knock out Juan Archuleta. Big shot by Rafion Stotts. That was explosive. Juan Archuleta had been doing very well in the stand-up. Juan does not know what happened. He is arguing right now about that stoppage. He was out. That it was a knee. knee. Yeah. Look at his leg. He hits the ground. He gets put out right there. Rafion actually hits him and brings him back. That knee, never saw it. You see his leg go stanky on him right there. Out. Big shot by Rafion Stotts. It was supposed to be a kick, and we've seen this many times before. The knee lands. A lot of weight behind that knee. 
Big elbow strike. Rafi on super starts. A product of Rufus Sport, but has trained in Las Vegas. And there he is celebrating with Scott Cushman of Rufus Sport, but has trained in Las Vegas at Extreme Couture. As Eric Nixick in his corner as well, and Rafion Supa starts with his 10th consecutive win. And is now the interim Bellator Bantamweight champion. And one step closer to cashing that $1 million bonus check. So Stotts and Patchy Mix advance to the semifinals on this, the first night of the eight-man World Grand Prix. Juan Archuleta saluting the crowd. As mentioned, going down for the first time due to strikes. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end, 16 seconds into round number three. By knockout, he advances to the semifinal round of the Bantamweight World Grand Prix as the interim Bellator Bantamweight World Champion, Rafian Superstar! Logan, over here. Michael, right over here. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Let's have a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my commands at all times. If you want to touch the again, let's do it now. wants to do what he needs to do and we know where MVP wants to be now it plays out in front of us and listen to this crowd slowly biting on a lot of the feints he's got to be a little bit more relaxed MVP doing a good job of pressing Storley's back towards the cage he's not going to feel comfortable just shooting off of there Really proactive start from MVP, who is a supremely good judge of distance. Story looks for that takedown. If he gets the takedown, you're going to hear the biggest boo over a takedown ever, but this is where Storley is remarkable. His wrestling translates so well in the cage. He switches from one technique to another and eventually catches his opponent behind. Storley made it absolutely clear to us he doesn't care about the crowd. He could care less about the booing. Beautiful carry right over onto his back. MVP has to stay active, has to try and get back to his feet. And that is the big moment. MVP has to be in that position where he does not accept the ground. Just that here, Mike. He's got to fight his way through all of this. The more that he can make Logan Storley have to try to wrestle and pull him in, use those arms, the more tired Logan will also get. Storley has a hold of those legs, though. Crowd know the significance of these moments. And this is where that cage makes such a difference because it's a balance point for Michael Page right now. Logan Storley, if it, the cage wasn't there, would be running him backwards right onto his back, and he can't do that because of the cage. But now he's able to at least pass that arm. You see his head past the arm of Michael Page, closer to taking the back. Four-time Division I All-American wrestler Logan Storley. Incredible high school record and beyond. MVP back 
to his feet for now. And one of the things about the length of MVP, when you see Logan starting to elevate, you see MVP actually able to keep, keep his feet scraping the ground. That adds a bit of friction. He's a difficult person to just pick up. You already touched on it, but MVP fully expecting to be taken down. There's no surprise in any of this. It's how he deals with it. It is exactly it. You could take a look. He's being out wrestled, but he hasn't in any way taken any damage for all this time that Logan Storley has put out a lot of energy in keeping him down or keeping him in that clinch position. He told us he'd need more than significantly more than one takedown per round Logan Storley to get the win to try and grind MVP down. So much at stake here for both men. Nice heavy shots to the body by MVP, but they're, they are just arm punches because there's no ability for him to use his legs and hips to put more power on it. 25 seconds, 25 seconds. Hey, Vince, if you want this position. He described it as ultimately trying to drain Storley's power bar, but that's what Storley's trying to do to him. Crowd don't like it. As I said, Storley could care less. If you're Logan Storley, you just stick to your game plan. You know the route to victory. It's not an easy one, but you know what you have to do. Stick with it. Well, Storley got the takedowns that he needed. The end of that opening round. But MVP undamaged. Undamaged, but you got to look at that round, and what you're looking at is what was the primary element of the round? It was grappling. This is the start. A clean right hand that he hit Storley with, but that's what Storley was able to use to get a hold of Michael Page, get the takedown eventually from this position. Page tried a couple of elbows, none of those were effective in any fashion. He finally, Logan was able to put him down, and the real question for the judges is, when you look at what the criteria is, what took place more? Was it the grappling or the striking? It was definitely the grappling, and Logan Storley's gonna end up getting that round. Behind the black line, Michael. Michael Benham Page is just one of the most relaxed athletes you've ever seen. Someone just yelled up at him over us on the side of the cage, and he said, don't worry, don't worry, it's coming. Stay calm. Well, he's smiling in his face. He's so right when he says, look, he could win 24 minutes of the fight. It doesn't matter. I'll still finish it. And he has that ability. He's that dynamic. He's that explosive, and he has that kind of power. So. He's right, Logan Storley, every time is, oh, that was a good shot. Nice clean right hand. Every time Logan Storley comes off of that stool at the beginning of a round, he's got to face a new guy that could possibly put him out. And he even found time for that little touch of trademark mockery. And Logan is showing you right now, he's a little bit flustered with the style. MVP. He's not sure when to shoot. The timing and the range is a little bit off. And that's because of the length and how fast Michael Page is. Yeah. Success on your feet against Neiman Grace is one thing, right? Totally different element. Not that, not that Neiman doesn't have some stand-up, but it's completely different than what we're seeing out of Page. That was a nice little check hook inside by Page. Storley letting his hands go. Round one for in Storley's area of the cage. Round two at the moment in Michael Venom Pages. And he's throwing those feints. He's looking to measure Storley. 
looks so mobile. He changes the distance in the fight in a flash, and that's what makes him difficult right there, extending out. Nice work by Logan Sterling to catch the leg. Now that he's in his position, you know Logan Sterling said, I am not letting go of this. He's starting to get that leg straight. That's going to help get that takedown. Page try and display his legs a little bit. Stay busy, guys. But he can't put too much weight on to Logan. That's going to help Logan take him down. Question is though, what can Storley do from here? Because Page has had a good opening for this second round. Put some angle on that elbow. It's a little warning there about the angle of that elbow. Can't go straight down, it can't go 12 to 6. All you need to see is an arc. Any arc makes it legal. Logan Sturley trying to be a piece of Velcro right now. He is trying to stick to MVP. Right now, MVP wants to let go of the head. You don't want to have that head. It's not going to help you. He can actually take his arms. He's reaching around. That's not going to help him. He wants to reach his arm actually inside of Logan Sturley's arms and use his body to create a pressure on his grip. Still got a big smile on his face here, Michael Venom Page. Page did a nice job of getting his back up against the cage. Storley took him into that open mat area. Come on, you see you busy on top. You're constantly telling him to stay busy on top. He's, well, Logan Storley is basically saying, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> he's trying to stay busy. He just took him back down. But what he's not doing, and this is his chance. Take a look at how he's lacing the arm. He's got the right arm of Michael Page laced so he can open up with his left hand. You see Michael trying to reach over with his own left hand to block it. That's the only thing he has to block. The ability of Logan Storley to punch him in the face right now. Closing seconds. Now he's got his hand free. The second round. Can Storley do any damage here? Stop. Another interesting round. Melvin Manhoff watching on. Fascinated here. That tremendous MMA record, and we'll be seeing him in action very shortly in his hometown, Peter Queeley. Terrific record, and what about that cage walk? And there is the poster for Dublin. Henderson against Queeley, Manhoff against Romero. That's Friday, September the 23rd. What a night that promises to be. We're in the middle of an extraordinary night here. We've had so much drama, so much action. It feels like there's lots on the way here. How did you score that second round? Look, I got to give that to Storley again. Page had his little moments in the stand-up, but nothing that was that effective with the more effective use of the cage and everything came from the grappling of Logan Storley. Those words of Michael Venom Page. I only need a second. The start to ring around your head at this point. Let's take a look at John's scorecard, just to confirm. Oh. There's that blind knee from Michael Benham Page. He slowly shakes his head. And the fact that Page is willing to still do that type of technique tells you the confidence that he has in what's occurring in this fight. Big time elbow strike by Michael Page. This is where he's so good. 
Felt like he could have done more against Douglas Lima, determined to do it here. Starting to warm to this task. Notice how, you see how Logan Sterling is moving on every feint. MVP knows that he's got him biting on those. And that would normally have him licking his lips. He's looking for Storley to shoot. He wants to bring that right hand and uppercut. That's what you can't do. You can't go over the top of Logan. Everything should be coming either towards horizontal with it or up. And limpet like Storley clings onto it. And that success that he's having on his feet is just sporadic. It is. I mean, he's having it, but it's momentary. And then all of a sudden, everything switches over to the grappling, and it overtakes the amount of striking that we have. But I am very impressed with how much trouble MVP has given Logan Storley as far as actually putting his back to the canvas. Storley has worked really hard at trying to get Paige flat on the canvas, and it has just not worked out for him. That's one of the remaining questions. How much has that hard work taken out of Storley? For little reward. see a little bit more. Here again, the referee telling Stawley he needed to see a bit more from him. Got MVP in defensive mode here, though, and that's exactly where he wants it. Stawley's trying to show that he's busy right here. He's got his leg entwined over the right leg of Page, keeping him from being able to make it to a standing position. Now he can actually get himself up. That's why you see Storley trying to kick that leg free. Storley working really hard right here. MVP does get to his feet. No leverage in those elbows. Crowd might make a difference here with the referee starting to get closer. It's also music to Logan Stooley's ears, though. If they're booing him, he must be doing something right. <laughs> Stay busy. Stay busy. I'm going to separate you. Fascinating to hear that constant dialogue. Stay busy, stay busy. Morgan working hard, trying to take the legs away. Page doing a great job. Notice that third point with his hand being that brace. That's four points of contact when you're talking about his back against the cage and everything. That makes it very difficult to move him. He's shaking his head. Michael Bennett Page. But Storley is doing just enough at the moment. Break. All right. So just, I know you're working. I know you're working. I just need to see a little bit more. Again, you heard that message reiterated. But when they come to see this fella, they come for pyrotechnics. They come for drama and extraordinary finishes. Well, if he doesn't find one of those, he might be in trouble here, MVP. This was the work early, John. That was a beautiful elbow attack by MVP. And, and the real question when you're looking at this, it's, it's the wrestling. The wrestling is where MVP is losing this fight. He's losing a wrestling match. He's not losing the fight. 
but he's losing in the grappling section and he's losing for a substantial amount of time in every round. He's got to turn it around. He's got to figure out a way to stop him. Storley from being able to get inside on him. One of the main things he has to do, in my opinion, is stop the techniques that are coming over the top and bring everything up the middle. Right, fighters, let's fight. Let's go, guys. Well, the good news for MVP is they start on their feet. Rounds in the bank, though, for Logan Storley. Three of them on Big John's scorecard, with which it's very hard to argue. And each round has started just like this, with MVP winning, you know, the, the first portion of the round. He's doing great when he's on his feet. Obviously, like we knew, he's obviously the more dynamic striker than Logan Storley. Oh, oh great right hand, right and Storley took it. He took that well, but we'll see how much it hurt him. Again, bites on those fates. There's the knee up the middle, followed by a right hand, putting the shots together now, MVP. See, so that's straight attack, horizontal. That's a good attack for Michael Benna Page. Anything straight up the middle is great. Uniquely elusive on his feet. There's another powerful right hand. Is he just starting to turn the tide here? Storley still stands in front of him. I had said that Storley needs at least five takedowns in this fight to win because he can't go a whole round standing with MVP. We'll see if that's true. His accuracy is just something else. It is, it's part of what makes him special. He is so accurate with his shots. He knows exactly where he wants to go, and he puts it on target. Just sense him backing Storley up here now. For the first time, Storley's a little bit tentative. Notice the flinching. You see the feint that MVP sets up. You see Logan, he's biting on him. He is worried about those shots coming. He's trying to figure out his timing on when he can drop levels and get into MVP. It's a much better round. It's exactly where MVP wants it. But remember, three rounds down, he has to do serious damage. And part of this might be after those three rounds, Logan Storley's arms might be really tired, heavy. So he's telling himself, I need to get a little bit of a break with my arms. And I'm going to try to stand up here. Looking for that one explosive moment. Jabs a great punch from Michael Ben and Page. He went after that flying knee there as Storley came in just a little off target. Logan getting his hands together. Once he gets his hands together, that's when Michael hits the canvas. They were Longer on their feet in this round with Page doing yes, damage. Were. And he's trying to do just enough here, Logan Storley. You know, little strikes and things, trying to get Page to move, but it has been impressive how Page 
has been able to keep his back. He's been on the he's been on the canvas with his butt, but his back is really not bad, and that is really impressive when you're talking about against a guy like Logan Storley. Elbow, elbow. Well, Ten seconds to go in the penultimate round here. Yeah. Much better round for Michael Bennett Page, but still he needs a dramatic concluding round, John. Well, you know, on my scorecard, <laughs> yes. But that's the kind of round you needed to see out of him because most of that was striking, and he was winning the striking pretty handily. He didn't get hit. He was landing clean shots on Logan Storley. Logan gets the takedown, and Logan did some you know, strikes with the body work, but nothing that was damaging. Take a look here. The knee up the middle, barely touches, but the right hand, clean shot. Right hand again. And he was able to open up several times going after him with combinations. Logan Storley doing a good job of surviving in the round as far as staying in the stand-up for a good four minutes, I'd say. So on your card, MVP needs a massive final round. He certainly needs to win this final round. Yes. To give himself any chance on the cards. But the tantalizing prospect with him is that anything can happen on the feet. There's the play knee from Michael Bennett Page. But it gave Story a chance. I love the fact that he went for it, but you look and you go, ah, you put yourself in that position for him to take you down. Now you're fighting him off again. Now it becomes a matter of real urgency for MVP. He has to get back to his feet. Boy, Logan Storley is working hard. He's trying to lift it. Hey guys, MVP up. Logan. He's been changing angles. MVP has done a great Keep job working. of styling a lot Keep of the wrestling excellence of Logan Storley. strikes landed so far. Don't grab that cage, Michael. Michael needs to dig that left arm in. It's too late Don't now. He's looking for a switch. Not in position for it. And he's down in the center Story of the cage. Has him in the center and on his back. Stay busy from here. He has worked tirelessly throughout this fight to try to get this position. Let's see what he can do. It's a desperate situation now for Michael Venom Page. Trying to join the real roll call of British MMA legends tonight. But right now he is being ground down by Logan Storley. And he 
Again, Storley is so clever, Jordan. Getting into the right position and working hard enough. Oh, he's working very hard right now. Looking at his corner there. His page just doesn't have the sufficient game that Storley has to fear in this position. A minute left. Big time shoulder pressure. There's a lot there right now. Storley made that point this week. He said no one attacks that shoulder like I'm going to. That's good work. What a display this is for him. Logan Storley, I know it's not what this crowd here in London came to see, but what willpower, what skill, what technique. He always had to turn it into a wrestling match, and that ultimately is what Logan Storley has done, and he has surely done it. Absolutely, both guys giving it everything they have. It, it, it was the battle of could MVP keep himself on his feet? Could he get that strike that was going to hurt Logan Storley, or was Storley going to be able to use his wrestling to take Page off his feet and take away all of those skills? That was the difference in the fight. Just for housekeeping, you score the final round for Storley. I did. So John's scorecard has it 4-1, 49-46 for Logan Storley. But you never know what the judges are going to say. So. Well, there was certainly one round, the third, and MVP stayed on his feet, landed some powerful shots. You could make an argument about that. The fourth was his. But we'll stop trying to second-guess them, and we'll... Wait for the decision as we take a look at some of Storley's really good work, John. Well, I mean, he get it. That was a beautiful fireman's carry right there that he just brought him down. But you saw MVP being smart, getting his back to the cage right away. Storley hit some great takedowns, but he wasn't able to hold Page from getting to the fence. All this beautiful work by Page to get back. And Storley was doing some great wrestling. Finally, at the end here, you saw him be able to take him down in the center, and that's when he was able to get his back to the cage and really stifle the effect of what Michael Benham Page was able to do. Well, John is going to head to the cage to interview the winner. We still wait to find out who that is going to be. Michael C. Williams is in position. And now, we're ready to find out. Let's get to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Brian Miner, scores the fight 48-47. He scores the fight for Storley. Your second judge at cage side, David Leatherby, scores the fight 48-47. He sees the fight for Page. Your third and final judge at cage side, Michael Bell, scores the fight 49 to 46 for the winner. By split decision, now the interim Bellator welterweight world champion, Logan Storm Storley. Justice is surely done as Logan Storley sinks to his knees to celebrate. Scott Coker puts the belt on him. He is the interim welterweight world champion. All right, All right gentlemen, gentlemen, five, five rounds, rounds for the Bellator middleweight, middleweight championships of the world. Conduct, Conduct yourself, yourself like champions at all times. Obey the rules we went over in the dressing room at all times and fight hard. Touch them up if you want to. Let's go to war. Mohegan Sun Arena, Bellator middleweight championship up for grabs.
So many Kadi statistics for Musasi, including 33 first round finishes. The latest back in February against right, Evelyn's teammate, Austin Vanderford. Right right All ready? six Let's stoppage work. wins for Evelyn have come in the opening round. The bell, and we are underway, scheduled for five for the Bellator Gold. Oblique kick right off the jump for Johnny Evelyn. Oblique kick, but take a look at the stance right now. Gegard Musasi is kind of square. That's because he knows Evelyn is a good wrestler, and he's going to give a little bit in the stand-up as far as opportunities for Johnny to try to connect because he believes he's that much better so he can stop the takedowns. There's something to say about being calm and composed at the highest level of MMA. Two of the all-time greats, a Fedor Emelianenko and now Gegard Mousasi. They definitely do not like, they have great poker face. Oh my God, the, fir the first time that I referee Gegard Mousasi, he was fighting for the championship, and during the entire fight, which didn't last that long, his heart rate never went above 70. He was amazing to me. I was like, is this guy gonna fall asleep? Well, in many ways, he's a Superman, wears the glasses, unassuming, doesn't court a lot of publicity, and yet, we mentioned at the top of the telecast, another all-time great, Habib Nurmagomedov, calling him the most underrated fighter in MMA, and definitely a case could be made that he's been underappreciated, but all he continues to do is win at the highest level. Close to two decades, John. Oh, oh nice. but a shot of a combination that damn by John from Evelyn. Johnny Evelyn, and Evelyn touches up Musasi. Evelyn's like, hey guys, I get it. Musasi, oh, oh, he's and oh he's my! Hurt. And look at the veteran Musasi recovering. Evelyn hurt him bad. Yes, he did, and now we're Johnny Evelyn needs to try to wow. stay right here. He's still hurt. There is no doubt that Gegard Musasi got rocked. And that's what Austin Vanderford tried to do in the opening round of his title defense. But Johnny Evelyn said, hey, when I dethrone Musasi, don't call it a shock. Well, he just shocked Musasi's system. He definitely put it where if Gegard wasn't awake before, he's awake now. And you know what? Musasi has only been knocked out once. And that was against Uriah Hall, oh. which he avenged. But my, oh my, adversity for the champion here in round one. But again, Look at his countenance, John. And, th and this is this is the part where to go back to the keys to victory. In this position now, Johnny Evelyn needs to do damage. If there's something that we talked about at the beginning of the show, is Gegar Musasi does not get damaged in just about any and fight. He remains calm under fire, although now Evelyn taking his back. So Evelyn, the underdog, coming in. Looking to keep Musasi from the golden milestone and what he hopes will be a golden night for American top teams. Couldn't ask for a better start for the challenger. Nice job. Down as Musasi's looking for the Kimura. Edward doing a nice job. Getting his feet. It was a little bit difficult for him to get him up, so he couldn't drag his feet. Johnny holding on to that. Nice ride, just taking his time. Not trying to get crazy. He knows he hurt him. He doesn't want to get crazy and lose his position or lose the, what he has accomplished so far in this round. Evelyn says he has the tank, the best skill set to take out Musasi. He grants it that Musasi has maybe a higher fight IQ, but Evelyn says he's younger, more athletic, and he thinks he has a better gas tank, and he's definitely putting the pressure on, but look at Musasi! The reversal by the champion, and he snatches the neck of Evelyn! And now an exchange incredible! I was gonna say, Evelyn is losing his position. You have to realize when you're losing it, don't try to stick with it. Wow, 45 seconds left. Planning to dissect already in this championship fight. Look, Evelyn brought in Sean Strickland to be one of his sparring partners in the stand-up because he knows how tough Sean is and that he likes to, you know, bang from the start. 
that brought confidence to his game, and he's showing that right now with Gegard. And Musasi, though, showing off his striking pedigree with the one-two, and Musasi, he trained with heavyweights, and oh yeah, owns a submission win over a mega heavyweight Mark Hunt in his career. He's recorded wins at middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight, and hey, he's... He's been in tough here against Johnny Evelyn. Evelyn showcasing his wares in the opening five minutes and having fun doing so, John. Yes, he is. Oh, he has to sit down. Go, go. Breathe, catch your breath, catch your breath. Good shit that round, man. Stay in some hope. This is the first shot right here. That beautiful left hand. Gegard felt that. There's no doubt that, that that gave him a buzz. And then here comes the big right. This is the one. It was almost a forearm shiver that landed across his jaw. Watch how fast this comes. Bip. Nice job by Johnny Evelyn, but Gegard <laughs> able to get in. And that's amazing that he's able to survive that kind of reaction and get right in on the takedown which gave him time. And there is Mike Brown on the left, King Mo on the right. King Mo was 6-0, and huge underdog 12 years ago when he challenged Musasi for the Strikeforce Light Heavyweight title, took Musasi down 11 times. Well, Musasi went back to the drawing board. It's become one of the best at defending the takedown, but hey, he went down courtesy of the power of Evelyn in that first five minutes. Well, he did. That was a great first round for Johnny Evelyn. Enough to give him the round, John? Oh, absolutely. Johnny Evelyn takes that round 10 now. Gotta ask these days for touching. <laughs> you never know, my man. And there's a sharp jab by Musasi. That jab is what Musasi really needs to start to rely on. But there's that left hand again for Evelyn. Finding the range, the timing, delivering a body kick. Oh, but then Musasi tags Evelyn. Evelyn looking for the takedown. Explodes, reverse. And Musasi very active from his back, but Evelyn goes into side control. Great job by Johnny Evelyn. A lot of movement there, but he wins the scramble, gets to the top position now inside mount. And while it's been proven to be very difficult to keep Musasi down, Johnny Evelyn working from side control, looking to maximize this advantageous position. And yet Musasi delivering right hands from the bottom. There's a left hand up top from Evelyn. One thing's for sure, Musasi will not willingly accept this position, John. No, but this is, a, in my opinion, against Gegard, this is a really solid position. A lot of times wrestlers like to get into the half guard so they can trap on that leg. Gegard very good at moving himself into a position for the sweep or to escape. He's got a lot of movement to get through from that side control position. Two minutes gone here in the second round, and Johnny Eblen three for three in the takedown department. But here's the attempted reversal by Musashi. Gets to his feet momentarily, but Evelyn bringing him back down to the canvas, and Evelyn account acquitting himself well here in his first title shot. Musasi had that. That was a beautiful hook sweep that he got to get himself in a position to get back to his feet. Evelyn right away just driving into him, still in a position where he has his hands around him. Sassi taken down yet again by Evelyn, his fourth takedown. And this is great work by Johnny Evelyn. He's really making Musasi work here. You want to get Gegard where his heart rate's up high. That's exactly what Johnny Evelyn is doing. And chance of let's go Johnny begin to fill Mohegan Sun Arena. Evelyn fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida by way of Kansas City, Missouri. Minute 45 left and Gegard Musasi gets back to his feet while Evelyn tries to 
keep him along the fence and on the break Evelyn delivers an elbow strike that's a nice job by Johnny Evelyn on the exit if you're gonna you know need that separation make him pay one last time Evelyn misses with a wild left jab through the guard by Musasi Locks that overhand left by Evelyn. Inside kick by the champion. Johnny getting a little bit more flat footed right now. Obviously, he's starting to feel a little bit of the heart rate going up. Trying to gain some time that he can breathe and get his heart rate down. And to the 10th minute of this championship fight. Evelyn has looked very good and lands a nice combination there, culminating with that left hook to the side of Musasi's head. Here's a good kick from Musasi and uh, may have bounced off the cup. The combination final 15 seconds of the second round and the game plan being put together by Evelyn and the crew at American Top Team delivering dividends through two rounds of action here. Absolutely. In zijn buik, Jega. In zijn buik. Ter ook in zijn buik. You know, Musasi pointed out that while Eblin has been impressed, he hasn't faced the rigors of a five round Next, title Gregor. fight and will wait to see if it gets into those championship rounds what happens. You know what I'm saying? They move out the way. Well, where it's coming. <laughs> this is all those elements that experience will do. Evelyn changing levels, driving in to Gegard. Beautiful takedown by Johnny Evelyn. Kick up the middle. In fact, a little clubbing right hand didn't do any kind of damage, but that separation with Johnny Evelyn a little bit of time. I thought Johnny Evelyn overall, he's fought a very smart and really mature fight. His fight IQ is up there, he's showing that. I have him up two rounds to none. Third round. Exchange of kicks. Scores for Eblin, fainting. Really kind of nice head up the rhythm and nice combination. Land the right hand. Musasi avoided that other right, but now Eblin sitting down on his punches. Nice head movement by Johnny Evelyn. You see good feints. Oh, nice jab countered by Musasi. That's that jab that Musasi needs to keep sticking. Back kick Little lands for Musasi. Yeah, and he moves back and avoids that combination from Evelyn. Musasi. Defense side steps that. Evelyn from Southpaw. Exchange body kicks. Sasi seemingly wanting to continue to collect the data. And again, he, you know, he saw it in the feature, didn't know allegedly who Johnny Eblin is. Well, he's definitely beginning. He knows who he, knows he is. Very now. well through the first two rounds and yet never showing any panic. And yet Eblin continues to land the strikes. Musasi credited with 10 more 
Strikes landed again. It's been the wrestling of Evelyn and the striking. I mean, he hurt Gegard Mousasi in the opening round. Uh, I'll say that Gegard has landed more strikes, but Johnny Evelyn has landed the more power strikes throughout this. And there's that overhand right that landed. Midway through the round in this championship fight again, the sharp shooting jab of Musasi, but no follow up. It's all single shots. Exactly. And that right now is because he's worried about the wrestling and being taken down. But Johnny Evans has been successful with so far. Now Musasi pumps the jab. Evelyn fainting. Wanting to get Musasi to bite him. Scores with a lead right. Well, look at the difference right now. At least Johnny Evelyn, most of the time, he's moving his head. He's giving a little bit of movement, just like you see right there. Gegard Mousasi's head's right on the center line. Yes, it is. And he just ate that body kick to the liver by the southpaw stance of Johnny Evelyn. Another oblique kick from Mousasi. The jab was parried by Evelyn. And again, John finding a home for that right hand. And another right hand lands for Evelyn to the face of the Bellator middleweight champion. Sassi's offense has to be comprised of a lot more than just the jab here against this hungry challenger. Johnny Evelyn, just six years younger than Musasi at 30, but a huge disadvantage in experience, a major step up, and so far he has proven that, yeah, he belongs in this championship fight as the number one contender. Final minute of the round. Rare right hand for Musas. What you saw just a moment ago when you saw Evelyn throw that big right hand just like he just did there. You need to see Musasi have a counter. When he's not countering, it's telling you he's tired. Let's take a look at Musasi right now. His mouth is open. He's breathing through his mouth. Which means he's at an oxygen deficit right now. We'll check the kick through the right hand. Final 15 seconds. Another strong round for the challenger, Johnny Eblen. As we head into the championship round. Hey, so Musashi's winning the counter. This right gonna come. He's down three rounds. Hey, so it's time. He gets too close to smother him. Smother him to the underhook. We can keep him in the cage. When you're when you're in a southpaw stance, let's go to your right. Stay southpaw a little more. He's not firing. He's not firing back in the southpaw. Not at all. Uh huh. You got busted the fill. You busted the fill. Comes Evelyn, beautiful left, right. A little bit wild on it, but both touch him. Musasi coming back with his counters. Steps back, nice, clean, just Round straight four. right. Left hand Round doesn't four. do any damage to Johnny, but it touches. Back up for him. Nice, big right hand at the end of the back extension. So ended up not with a lot of power, but it definitely touched right, that chin. Round four. Round four. Ready? Johnny Let's Evelyn has fought a beautiful fight so far. Utilizing both his striking and his wrestling. He's got Gegard in a position where Gegard is not sure what's coming. We have entered the championship rounds. Round four, Musasi possesses one of the best jabs in the sport, but a jab alone won't be enough against Johnny Evelyn, not on this night. Oh, Johnny Evelyn right now. And he's gaining confidence as the fight's going on. Head kick. But you're right about Musasi's body language and the fact that he remains with his head on the center line. See right there, normally you're seeing a good counter from Musasi. It's almost like he's a little tired and he's just unable to get it off. Nice job by Johnny Edler. Make 
recorded six takedowns for Johnny Eblen. One minute gone in round four. Kegart Musasi most of the time able to get to the top position against all of his opponents has not found that once in this fight again finds himself with his back against the cage Johnny Evelyn putting a lot of pressure on him not a lot of damage but time is just clicking by and he's having to carry Johnny Evelyn's weight getting more and more tired Evelyn a hook in with has Musasi's back. He has one guillotine choke. The lone submission victory for Johnny Evelyn. As Musasi finds himself in rough waters against the number one contender. Evelyn needs to be very careful of not allowing Musasi to turn inside. Musasi back control has been submitted three times never be a rear naked choke right now there's not even close to just what we call a seatbelt position controlling the position with Musasi but there's no danger right now to a submission that can always change Doing a nice job riding to the top position. Just continuing to put pressure on Musasi. Musasi trying to bring the knee up. Not quite there. Sassy walking down, Evelyn now delivers the body kick with just single shots. There's that jab that misses. Evelyn looking to parry the jab. And again, chance of let's go Johnny and heading into the final minute of the fourth round. Evelyn secures another takedown, make that seven in the final minute of this penultimate round. This is why I feel Johnny Evelyn really needs to start to open up. Start to try to do things that cause damage here. You've been winning the stand up in the outside. The wrestling's been great. Start doing damage to the ground. Make it to where he doesn't even want to get back to his feet. We are watching the middleweight championship on Friday, July 22nd. You'll get to see lightweight champion Patricky Pitbull defend the title against number one ranked contender Sidney Outlaw. Bellator MMA making his Pacific Northwest debut in Tacoma, Washington. Don't miss it Friday, July 22nd, only on Showtime. And here at the Mohegan Sun Arena, Gut check time for the middleweight champion, Gegard Musasi. Oh, in my opinion, Gegard needs to finish Johnny Evelyn if he wants to walk out of this building with his title in hand. Enough. He ready? He's coming. When he's coming, he's going to take him out and smother him. Let's flood him. King Mo 
former MMA champion. I've had the chance to, to work with him in broadcasting, a chance to pick his brain. As, uh, you talk about a student of the game when it's MMA boxing. Look, he's already feeling it. Fifth and final round, he feels right, here we go. Right. Right. that his right. protege on the verge of becoming just the seventh fighter to hold the Bellator middleweight championship, Johnny Eblen with less than five minutes now to pull off this upset. Johnny Evans out, moving, good footwork, sticking the jab. He knows where he's at. He knows how much more he has to do. You also know what Gegard Musasi, oh, nice counter right cross, and Evelyn now letting Musasi know about it. What do you make of Gegard Mousasi tonight not taking anything away from Johnny Eplin because it's been Johnny Eplin's night and that's been the case, but anything that you can point out that might lead to even more insight as to what has not been a, a great night for Gegard Mousasi at all. No, it's definitely not been a great night for him, but that's because of Johnny Eplin. It's the things that Johnny Eplin... I want you to go back to the first round. Was he able to hurt him? Yeah. In the first round, again, we talked about it at the start of the show. Gegard does not get damaged. He got damaged in the first round. He's been damaged in a couple other rounds, and that has made a difference in this fight. Johnny Evelyn has just done a fantastic job. Musasi 7-1 here in Bellator again, in the midst of his second reign, the low loss. Outpointed by Rafael Lovato Jr. for the title. Lovato Jr. forced to relinquish the title and retire from the sport. And now it's Johnny Eblin. How impressed are, have you been with his striking? I mean, super impressed. I've been saying for a while, his striking is getting better and better. He's, he's more confident in his hands. He's more confident in this fight than I've seen him in any fight. <laughs> Obviously, he put in the work that he needed. He went the rounds with the guys that were pushing him and making him better, and it's all paying off tonight. Another takedown attempt pays off for the challenger. Johnny Eblen has completely neutralized one of the best finishers in mixed martial arts. We have sung his praises, rightfully so, throughout the night, but Johnny Eblen earning the praise. There's always that night that comes when, yep. you know, it's not your night, but it is your opponent's, and everything they do works for them, and everything that you try just doesn't seem to work for you. And That's what we've seen tonight. And Evelyn told us, he warned us, he said, hey, he doesn't think a lot of people realize how good he is because he hasn't fought many high-level guys. He recorded a big win over the veteran John Salter, who, of course, challenged Musasi, but this has been, you know, an amazing effort by Johnny Evelyn and Gegard Musasi is stuck. He is stuck. You know, and this is why everyone gets into MMA math, and we try to tell you, look, you can't can't use MMA math. Styles make fights. Certain people on certain nights can beat anybody. Johnny Evelyn is that good. We've seen him before as far as have nights where he just, everything he did worked. And tonight, it's happening again for him. He looks fantastic. Began his athletic career in wrestling at the age of five. We talked about his credentials at the University of Missouri. And then Steve Moko, well-known and accomplished amateur wrestler, brought Johnny Eblen to American Top Team, where he has trained with an all-star camp, some of the best fighters in the sport. And Johnny Eblen is on his way to proving that he is one of the best fighters in the sport as he is 25 seconds away from upsetting 
an all-time great in gate guard Musasi. Not only upsetting, in my opinion, winning every round of the fight. And putting a punctuation mark on the proceedings with another takedown. Johnny Evelyn. What a performance. The human cheat code seemingly has found a way to break Gegard Mousasi's code and Evelyn in the center of the cage taking a moment. King Mo, who again, we talked about it, he defeated Gegard Mousasi back in the day, I'm sure he's probably even more happier for, for Johnny Evelyn and what I think you got that right. he has accomplished here tonight in just his 12th professional fight. Well, if you go back to it, King Mo, when Johnny Evelyn first came to Bellator, King Mo came and talked to us, he said, this kid's special. I'm telling you, he's gonna be a champ. He's, he's just good everywhere, and he just, everything that I teach him, he picks up and he makes part of who he is. Obviously, that's all true. Yo, yo, you would do that. Listen, listen. No one be do that. No one be do that ass that bad. Fuck that. Oh. Well, we're gonna have some highlights here, but it's all gonna be Johnny Evelyn because, really, big left hand. This is the start of the fight. This is where I said the big thing is we didn't see Gegard Mousasi get damaged a lot. He got damaged right there. That's called damage. He got rocked. And that happened early in the fight, and it had an effect on the fight. Yes, he was able to get the takedown, but overall, Johnny Elman was able to land the big shots, get the big takedowns, hold position, create the problems. Johnny Eblen in this fight was unstoppable. Everything that he tried worked. He was confident. He felt good. This is a wrestler. Look at him using his hands because he has worked on it. And, and that's the big thing that I think that needs to be said, Morrow. You've got to give Johnny Eblen all the credit. That is hard work that's paying off. <laughs> and Game no! Mo. And no! Hey, he's oh, letting no! it be known. American oh. top team, one of the top camps, and they may also be adding to their extensive trophy case here tonight. Fuck no. My fucking belt. I'm the best in the fucking world. With the official decision, here is Michael C. Williams. Upset in my Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in tonight's world title fight, we go now to your three judges at cage side. Brian Miner, Marcel Varela, David Peabody. All see it exactly the same at 50 to 45 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new Bellator middleweight world champion, Johnny, the human Chico Edwin. Gracious in defeat, the class act that is Gegard Musasi, but wow, a clean sweep. All right, gentlemen, this is five rounds for the Bellator lightweight title. We went over the rules in the back. I want a good, clean fight. If you'd like, touch gloves now, and the best of luck to you. Turn to your corners. The maiden voyage for Patricky Pitbull as lightweight champion. It's all about the belt, and for Pitbull, looking to knock off Nurmagomedov, hand him his first defeat. This is the first time that Ready Nurmagomedov is competing fight. in a five-round fight. Round number one, and we are underway from the Wind Trust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. And already, Nurmagomedov, who has a crafty Cavalcade of kicks in his arsenal goes that route to initiate contact. 
Yeah, one of the things with the Pitbull brothers, they like to take the center of the cage and then let their opponent come to them and throw counters on them. If you are patriking this fight, you cannot just stand in the center. You've got to actually push forward and crush that space, or else you're going to be facing all of these different kicks that are coming your way. Yeah, Patricky with Pitbull wants to make his presence known in the pocket, but he has to navigate a, a minefield of strikes from Nurmagomedov, who is able to transition and just be fluid and dynamic and again already showing how many different kicks in the first minute that's exactly right and you're, it's just gonna continue to build we've seen when uzman gets confident in a fight it is not a good thing for their opponent things just start going downhill fast for him Magomedov going back and forth to orthodox now southpaw looking for that side kick and the crowd here in Chicago chanting there is Patricio Pitbull the reigning featherweight champion who well avenged his brother's loss to Michael Chandler becoming lightweight champion and then vacating the title in order to give his older brother an opportunity to live his dream as the Bellator king of the lightweight division and of course a knockout victory tonight would break the the tie with Michael Venom Page and make him the KO King in Bellator MMA with 11. But that's <laughs> easier said than done against a guy who's yet to taste defeat and already the kick's beginning to deliver dividends. That was a nice check by Usman on that kick by Patricky. We'll see how much he continues to throw his kick now based upon that check. Inside kick and there's an oblique kick and and again, he's able to, with one sequence, with the same foot, do two or three different kicks. And you got to figure right now, you know, he's, he's probably kicked somewhere between 10 to 15 times, maybe 20. I can tell you right now, he is 12 before 20, according okay. to our stats. So well done, Mr. McCarthy. Meanwhile, Pitbull two for two, but it is a kicking clinic early on for Usman Nurmagomedov, the challenger. And that, th those kicks tell you one thing. We talked about the range and distance. Yes. That means that he has established, he's been able to maintain that range and distance, and that is not a good marker for Patricky in winning this fight. You have got to crush that distance. You're gonna have to go inside, step inside and throw your hands. Speaking of steps, John, what about the footwork of Nurmagomedov? So fluid, so incredible. And this is the goal. And this is the whole part. See, everyone looks at the way Habib used to fight, and look, he was fantastic. But they are different fighters. One loves the stand-up, one loved the ground. And you can see how much time and effort Usman has put into his stand-up game because when he wants to flow, he just moves very well. Always balanced. Started Muay Thai when he's seven, freestyle wrestling at eight, MMA at 11. So again, the generation that is born into MMA, and there's that striking from the champion, Patricky Pitbull, unleashed a two-punch combination, but continues to be tagged on the lead leg, and there's a head kick with the left leg of Nurmagomedov. That was a nice step in attack by Patricky, but he's got to maintain once he steps inside, don't let that separation occur. Keep pressing forward and use your hands to do damage. Final minute of the first. Magomedov fighting at range, resets. The tricky pit bull. Cognizant of the fact that this youngster can attack at different angles and different ways. And You got to figure Usman spent over three months in Abu Dhabi training with Islam Makhachev, both of them having championship fights. And so everything that he did there and all of the wrestling defense work he did against Islam is only going to pay off for him here against Patricky if Patricky works for those takedowns. Makhachev, new UFC champion, and you look at AKA, which has been a pipeline of champions, Habib Nurmagomedov. Cain Velasquez, Daniel Cormier, Luke Rockhold, and of all of those fighters, Javier Mendez, the trainer, thinks Usman Nurmagomedov may be the best. It says a lot. Here's something about having a number one hit. Can't wait for the next one. You just gotta hold on. That's right. What are you doing here? Are you in love with me? I would do anything in my power to protect you. What if we're all just broken from what happened to us? They call me in the middle of a yawn.
You imagine that? Você já o Arthur é melhor que ele. Arthur é melhor que ele. Ele tá assim, ó. A Distance. Just keep the front case to the top. That's okay. Speaking hey, of Javier school. Mendez, giving Nurmaga hey. Madoff instructions in between rounds while Patricio Pitbull was helping his brother. There is Javier Mendez, longtime trainer, kickboxing great in his own right, and AKA. And that's two. his brother Usman. Usman who's a I'm sorry, Umar. that's Upar, yeah. Usman's brother behind him. That man away to the UFC. Oh, oh, oh. They're everywhere, John. Yeah, tell me about it. Taking over the sport, and it's incredible to, to witness and just how incredibly popular the, the Dagestani contingent is. Getting a very good reception here in Chicago, and uh, Nirmaga made up now with that stance. There's a kick to the midsection of Patricky Pitbull, and Pitbull still kind of just taxiing on the runway. Has had that one moment in the first round, stepped in, delivered the one-two, but very hard to try to close the distance and try to get on track here as he goes for an oblique kick. There he is, that, that's a nice explosion from him, but again, you've got to use your feet to get inside. You can't lunge over. And of course, with all of the kicks coming from different angles and different distances, Patricky would be try, oh, try to maybe time it with the counter or maybe catch it. He goes inside with a low kick. Because let's face it, Patricky Pitbull also a BJJ black belt. We talked about it, John. What would be the 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 the, the chance of a guy who known for his power wants to knock out Nurmagomedov, but. Would it be wise for him to try to take it to the ground against a guy who's also been very, very proficient in grappling? Look, if you're if you're an MMA fighter, it's much easier to fight someone that's not going to try to take you down anytime because then all you're doing is fighting the stand-up. If you at least try to take him down and make him think about it, then he has to at least deal with that instead of just dealing with the strikes. There's more for him to think about. It slows down his offense. It's a good thing. I just don't, you know, oh, that was a oh, clean. Beautiful, setting up the takedown as he baited him with that left hand, an incredible, incredible transition, and Nurmagomedov has the takedown on Pitbull. And that was a beautiful counter hand if you watch Uzman land on Patricky. That snapped his head back. Watch that left hand, man, that left hand just blasted. Seti using the left hand to set up the takedown. And as we near the midway point of the second, we'll see how the champion is able to work from his back, controlling the posture of the challenger. Hammer fist, short hammer fist, and an elbow from Nurmagomedov. So doing, trying to do damage to the champion, not just laying and praying here. Of course, dynamic Dagestani fighter. A lot of shoulder pressure. This is something you're working out with someone like Makachev. That's a guy that can create an unbelievable amount of pressure. You learn when you're working with someone like that how to create your own pressure. Uzman on top is not good. I, I said from the beginning, whichever fighter ends up in the top position, it's not good for their opponent. And right now, Pitbull needs to work his way out. Elbow from Mr. Magomedov and Pitbull trying to do just that, trying to perhaps use the Fence, but he's now back in a supine position courtesy of Nurmagomedov. He, see, every one of these elbows you see Usman landing, that just, it's like punching a hole in the gas tank. It damages you, it just starts to make you slower, and that's something that Pitbull cannot give up in this fight. Oh, commentary between the two fighters. Body head, body head with the right hand well, of Nurmagomedov. If Usman is talking, he got he got that habit from his cousin, Habib, who used to talk to every one of his opponents. I did enough of his fights, and he would sit there telling them, you need to quit. I'm going to smash you. Just stop. Like trying to smash Patricky Pitbull here. Pitbull, meanwhile, desperately trying to get out from underneath, but 
Usman Nurmagomedov continuing to feed the elbows and the right hands under the armpit now of the champion. You can see that beautiful lacing of the arm that he's got on that left arm. Nurmagomedov looking to get the hooks in. What a, what a beautiful transition. Look how he sliced that knee inside. He's looking for the choke. He's got five submission victories, including two rear naked chokes. Pitbull has lost via submission once against Lloyd Woodard back at Bellator 62 10 years ago. And it looks like Patricky Pitbull may be able to survive round two, but it's all Usman off. Will he survive? Elbows from up top, and what a dominant round for the challenger, John. Absolutely, that was a big, big round for Usman Nurmagomedov, and that last sequence, that last hey, sequence that was, was brutal. Beautiful. Pops his head that, back, John, and there That was that left hand that popped his head straight back, but a beautiful transition from the striking, wow. dropping down, changing levels into him, takes him down, and then take a look at this. Mounted position, just lighting him up with big elbow strikes. Nurmagomedov with designs of becoming the first Bellator champion from Dagestan. A lot of supporters here at Win Trust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Playing host to its first Bellator MMA event, the first of our two championship fights tonight. Gentlemen, round three. That round right there just gave Uzman a ton of confidence. Oh, a ton of respect there by Nurmagomedov as they start round three. He starts from Southpaw again, fine with the jab, oblique kick, and there, that. Patricky Pitbull trying to initiate the explosive attack, John. And again, the oh, defending the takedown attempt there as strike totals all Nurmagomedov. 82 of 113, 7 of 73%. Unbelievable. Body kick by Nurmagomedov. Right kick to the face by Nurmagomedov. Right now, Nurmagomedov is just breaking Pitbull down, just slowly diminishing him with every shot that he's landing. Pitbull can't figure out the way to break that distance. Any suggestions? <laughs> Look, it, it's a whole lot easier to say than it is to do, but he's got to take chances now. He's got to say, hey, I've, I've got to step inside. And when, when he steps inside, move your feet inside, bring your head off that center line, and start throwing shots straight down the pipe. Uppercuts are good. Circling to his left, and of course, that right hand of Patricky Pitbull, his money shot. There's Nagamedov again, just keeping his lead hand from Southpaw John, just out there, keeping. Pitbull thinking, keeping him at bay. And there's a sidekick to the bread basket by Nurmagomedov. He's showing you the respect that he has for that right hand power of Pitbull. Look at where his left hand is. It's right up, right cover. It's supposed to be right. the entire time, exactly. Now the fight IQ of this 24 year old, and again, it goes all the way back to the, the patriarch, the late. Abdul Manap Nurmagomedov, the father of Habib Nurmagomedov, and, and what he was able to accomplish with the youngsters and, and the family and, and the surrounding area. And uh, Usman Nurmagomedov, as we mentioned, looking to become an undefeated okay. champion. And there is Javier okay, Mendez okay. Okay. and other members of the camp. That's Abu Bakr there. You see it up front. That, 
these guys train together, they live together, they do everything together, and everything is just about helping each other. You got to give, and they're going to give back, and you can see the results. And that's what they've learned from Abdelmanov. Habib Usman, Umar, and Abu Bakar, 76 3 1. That's mixed martial arts. It's an really incredible record. And honestly, if you, look, you talk about that record, it's Abu Bakr that has the three losses and the one draw. All the rest of them undefeated. Left in the third. Mugamadov content to be at this distance and switching stances and again looking to land the kick upstairs. But Patricky Pitbull trying to move forward but forced on his back foot. Now he switches stances. We talked at the beginning of this fight, the whole element of the range and how he's got to crush that and he has not figured out a way to do it as of this third round. Magomedov just landed the jab with the right hand and misses with the one two. Nice hard kick to the body by Pitbull. He needs to do more of that. And there and Marco made up again. He's the one crashing <laughs> into the uh, range. And he has just landed his 100th strike of the fight. He's thrown 147. Meanwhile, for the champion, 12 of 31 thus far. Paltry output thanks to the, the pressure and the, the kicking attack of Numagomedov. So we are headed to the championship rounds and again the first time that the challengers in a five round fight. So, lean break. Well, we know what the fans think, John. What, what do you make of what you're witnessing right now in terms of the, the approach from the champion, Patricky Pitbull. The approach of Pitbull is he's confused. Let's just be honest. He's having a hard time breaking that distance down. And if you're looking at Usman, you know, it, is, it is not a fighter's job to get hit. It's to not be hit and hit your opponent. And he's doing a beautiful job of that. Make a baby. You got it. Here we go. Beautiful jab straight off. Got into him. But wasn't, wasn't able to get the takedown. But... But right. man, how beautiful. cool is it? Yeah, again, you okay. want to see the group. How many times you see naked shots, telegraph shots? He uses his striking to, to change the ground, levels right. and get right into the grapple. Right. And as we begin round four, Usman Namagamadov is. It's like he looked like in round one. He is uh, maintaining, again, the pace hasn't been. Incredibly high by any means, but it's been Usman Nurmagomedov, and we appreciate the respect, but the fans would like to see them get it on here, John. <laughs> Why can't you like your opponent? <laughs> Wow. Hey, take a look at the total strikes here. 102 of 152 at 67%. Oh, there, see, there is a there well, using his speed, but uh, there Pitbull able to escape the takedown attempt because it was a naked shot. That's right. And that is the difference. When you, you shoot that naked shot comparatively without utilizing your hands to set it up, it is a much more difficult thing to do against a guy that knows how to wrestle. So Usman is showing he's had a very good attack with his hands has set those takedowns up well and in the second round when he got it you saw how well he did on the ground and we just saw a nice inside calf kick by the challenger again wearing down the lead leg of the champion Patricky Pitbull and Pitbull fires off an inside kick that Nurmagomedov absorbed Side kick. Magomedov racking up the points. Oh, 
Yes, by Beautiful the challenger on the face of the champion Patricky Pitbull, and his face is busted up. Pitbull doesn't like having his back against the fence, so you know when you see him getting close to that fence, he's not comfortable with what's happening in the fight. Double jab from Nurmagomedov, and then Pitbull coming forward, but unable to score anything of note. And again, that continued movement by Nurmagomedov, moving in and out of range. And continues to just wear him down with kicks. And, I, and I'm telling you, I'm very impressed with Patricky and what the kind of condition that he's in, because all those shots with the kicks that, he, that Uzman has landed to the body, that front kick, the side kick, wow. all of it. I mean, it's the numbers are astronomical for Nurmagomedov in terms of his domination. And there's a body kick by the champion. Two minutes left in the penultimate round, and champ resets hands down, backing up. Nurmagomedov flicks the front kick to the midsection, and uh, Patricky Pitbull just... But you notice how he was leaning more. You yes. saw how he was leaning forward as he was coming forward, because his feet were, were planted. He's trying to land with power. He's got to slide his feet in to those situations so he can come with more than just that one, two. He can get to the three, four. It's almost as if the champion may even be in a way trying to bait Nurmagomedov, you know, putting it down because he's, it's, it's, you wonder who's going to lead the dance. Right we now. know that Pitbull's an effective counter striker as well, especially as you mentioned with that right hand. Yeah, he has been throughout his career, but in this fight, Usman has him where he is unsure exactly what's he's coming, to where it's coming, all but there, and when he should throw. Yeah, a moment. For Pitbull to again throw a combination, but Nurmagomedov darting in and out. Just 50 seconds left in the fourth. And there again, the kick connects to the face. The feints being employed by Nurmagomedov. Pitbull has got to commit. He's got to sit down and say, hey, look, I'm behind in this fight. I need to start making some, some big mo movements towards Usman to land with the power that I have. Because he does. He's got power in each hand. Doesn't matter if it's the right or left. If it lands, it can hurt Usman or put him out. of urgency as you would expect in the champion's corner. Eric Alba Racine, who's helped Patricky Pitbull and his brother in the wrestling department. Patricio on the outside yelling words of encouragement to his brother. They know this round is everything to his title reign. And for Usman Nurmagomedov, in the first fifth round of his blossoming career, he could potentially be five minutes or less away from becoming the new Bellator lightweight right, champion. Fifth and final round, Patriki. Let's go. Five minutes left in this fight, John. I just got asked. 
Part of the traffic, unofficial scorecard, and why? Unofficial scorecard, I have Nurmagomedov winning every round so far. And Nurmagomedov, now Patricky Pitbull, knowing that it's now or never, beginning to put pressure on Nurmagomedov. That's what he needs to do. It, it's going to be an L. If you don't go after him, and you don't hurt him, and you don't get rid of him in this round, it's going to be an L no matter what. So And finally, aggression. Let it hang out. The champion is Nurmagomedov. Win for the takedown. Continues to deliver oblique kicks to the lead leg of the champion, but Patricky Pitbull definitely trying to ratchet up the offense in the meantime. Double jab, and it ends up with Patricky Pitbull on his back again, courtesy of Nurmagomedov. That was a beautiful takedown. Beautifully set up by Nurmagomedov. Pitbull was looking for him to strike. Dropped levels on him, took him straight down. And the challenger has dominated in every facet of the fight. So far, he has been the dominant fighter. Closed guard where Really, Patricky Pitbull has to try to find a way to <laughs> get Nurmagomedov off of him, and it's uh, going to be tough sledding for the lightweight champion is Usman Nurmagomedov, who's blood now, even more blood on the face of the champ. Yeah, right now, all you're seeing from Patricky is he's holding tight, he's trying to keep that position where no posture so I don't get hit with big shots. Holding him tight is not going to help him hold on to the goal. No, no. The, 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 the more that he holds him tight, the further away that belt is marching over to Usman's corner. Bellator lightweight champion, a bloody mess. Struggling on his back as Usman Nurmagomedov keeping it close, tightly to his chest, now looking to pass guard. Nice hit movement by Usman, but a very good job of keeping that guard by Patricky. But again, right now, at this point in the fight, keeping the guard can keep him from being hurt and damaged anymore but it's definitely not going to help him in winning this fight. Two minutes away from a changing of the guard in the Bellator lightweight division. Usman Nurmagomedov in top position, working from the close guard of the champion throughout this fight. It's been all Usman Nurmagomedov. He's thrown 225 strikes. Oh, and now there's a Matt returning right onto full mount, John. Minute 35 left. We saw what happened last time with the elbows. And Usman Nurmagomedov in prime position to try to close the show and make history as the first Bellator champion from Dagestan. He's putting a lot of pressure, that shoulder pressure. You're seeing how it's forcing Pitbull's head to the side. Final minute, and Pitbull nice is Pitbull. Beautiful sweep, and Pitbull now has to let it all hang out. Less than a minute left, potentially in his title ring. But you saw right away when he got turned, what did Usman do? Feet right on the hips, pushed him off, right up to his feet. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I know it's a cliche, John, but here it is. 25 seconds left. Patricio Pitbull has to look. If he is looking to be the king of knockouts, he's got to try because Usman Nurmagomedov is well on his way. He's got to at watch the age Mary. of 24 years old of moving to 16 and 0 and becoming the champion of Pitbull. Explodes, but time runs out. Has time 
run out on the Patricky Pitbull lightweight title reign. I know I wear glasses, John, but how can it be any other way than the crowning of a new champion here tonight in Chicago? Now, there's no way that it'll be anything more. Uzman Nurmagomedov just took the Bellator lightweight title from Patricky Pitbull with a beautiful performance. Composure, maturity, effective game plan, and conversely, Patricky Pitbull banged up, busted up. It was all Usman Nurmagomedov. Let's take a look at some of these highlights from the beginning. That push kick, all of the variety of kicks, and then the use of the hands to get Pitbull covering up, dropping levels. When he got to the top position, he landed big, heavy shots that did damage. The wrestling was a huge difference for Uzman Nurmagomedov. He was able to take Pitbull down multiple times in the fight, and when he did, opening up a big cut with that elbow right there, gets the back, takes it back down with a mat return, gets the back off of that, right to mount, Landed some big shots from here. It's a heck of a win for Uzman Nurmagomedov. Uh, After 25 minutes inside the Bellator cage, we await the official decision. It's all but certain that we will be crowning a new Bellator lightweight champion. Let's find out. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in tonight's first world title fight, we go now to your judges at cage side. Your first Scott Jones scores the fight 50 to 45, while judges Sal D'Amato and Michael Bell both see it the same at 50 to 44. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new Bellator lightweight world champion, Usman Nurmagomedov. 